All right, so you can see the baffle. This is the main one that's gonna go across the middle right here. What I did is I got just a couple pieces of scrap angle iron and just got it clamped in here so that I could just lay that piece on there and slide it in. You can see it's got a sag in it right now, but that's gonna come out when I take the, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack it, tack it on the sides there and then I'll come back and I'll put the correct width baffle piece that goes in here, you know, and what it'll do, it'll, it'll pick it up. It'll pick it up where it needs to be. So I'll go ahead, I'll get it tacked over there and over here, and then I'll put my, I'll put my pieces in, so it'll be, you know, one, two, three, and then four, five, and six. Right there is what it'll be, but, and then once I get it tacked in, then I'll undo the, the vice grips, welding clamps there and pull this angle iron and that little scrap piece of angle iron out down there. They'll come out. There you go. But I got to, uh, the tank is, this side right here is, is pushed out this way a little bit. So I got some giant clamps over there. And what I'll do is I'll catch it and I'll pull, I'll pull this bulge out of it back in. It's probably about, it's about 3 sixteenths out right there. It's just from where that, that size bulged out a little bit. I'll pull it back in, and get it get it where I can where it'll look like this side right here. Let's see how that looks right there. So that's what's going on right now. Oh, and you can see the slot there and there and there and there. And then you can see the half moons back there if I can get it to get the focus right there where my finger is. You got four of them across too. So you can see the center baffle right there is in there now. And you can see what it's looking like. I don't have any of that tacked in yet. But I'll just line this up on this line. There's a line on the underside of it right there. And I'll just tack it underneath here. And then I'll take my square and I'll just drop it. I'll just drop it in there beside it like that right there and get it get it square and tack it down there and then build a build a weld it in like that and then that's what I'll do and then of course I'll want to go right here one right there and there and there and there and see when I put that one in there then that pushed that pushed it up like where it's supposed to where it's supposed to go right there you see that's how you do it man all right, more about these baffles. I said I was gonna not sit, not bottom of that that all the way out in the bottom of the tank, and I got to thinking about it, and that's not the way I've done the other ones. Once I thought about it for a little bit, then I remembered how I'd done the other ones. This is this is what I'm doing. This will go toward the bottom, and see I fortified the the both corners off, and then I've slotted it in the middle. So this thing will. This thing will go in here just like this, just like just like that, and slide all the way in. And then the fuel, the fuel will be able to pass through right here and right there as the main passageways, and it'll be able to get back and forth right there too. What that'll do is is uh, that'll allow me to tack it to the bottom of the tank here, so it'll it'll hold that thing. Because, man, you don't realize how much fuel moves. And it'll support these sides a lot better when I tack it right here. Because, see, on the top, when the top goes in there and I put the lid on it, there's not going to be any tack in the top. I could slot the lid once I put it on there and then weld through it, but then that's another hole in it, and I'm just not going to do that. But this will be fine with it having, uh, you know, two, four, six, eight compartments which is 100 gallons divided by four, and that'll be perfect for, for that. We'll have to worry about that. So I'm gonna set the camera up. I got one more over here that I had done. What I'm doing is I'm taking the torch and just burning the 45s off and then taking the, uh, the disc cutter on the grinder and slotting that slot right there. So I've got, I've got one right here that I hadn't done. I'm gonna set the camera up where y'all can watch that. But you can't have too much baffling in a tank it does several the main thing it stops the fuel from sloshing 
and it also supports that tank too and so if you put like if you were to put just one baffle in the middle of that tank it wouldn't be enough it would slosh and it would finally it would break it would either break the baffle loose inside the tank or it would break it through to the outside and that's what happened on our giant tank our 430 gallon tank that we got it had enough baffling in it but the dig on tank was just so big and it I made it out of 11 gauge also it's just too thin it really needed to be a little bit thicker but the problem you go a little bit thicker then you got a lot heavier tank you know because I mean this some guns even with the eighth inch uh, metal once I get all the baffling and the lid on it and then the pump on it and you know an event and the field on it you're going to be talking about a good bit of weight and then you've got to put 90 something gallons of fuel in it fuel weighs seven and a half pounds a gallon so you do the math you got a good bit of weight there and so you better you know if you're going to build one you better better do it right so i'm going to set the camera up over here where you can watch me cut one right quick i'll do it and uh you can see why i do it There's one finished up right there. It's 45. I use a speed square and I put it on about 15. Cut it that 45 on the bottom. Slide it in the middle. Grind it, clean the sides of it. Up. It's ready to go. Alright, they fit it and I'm going to start welding them in. I'm going to start tacking them just all around. Kind of get it going here is what I'm going to do.
in tight is this side right here. I got a little clip over there and I need to pull this one in just a little bit. The side's bowed out just a tad right there. Pull it in and then I'll tag it. But that's how you put the baffles in and then the uh, other baffles they'll go just like this. Go in there. Just like this. I'll chew it up. Get it right on the line. So you can get an idea. He sits in there, she's going to be a bunch of compartments. There it is with all the baffles in it. Alright, I'm going to show you, for y'all, what it looks like. I'll run a grinder in here and clean up all this splatter. But you can see the little slot. Let me cut this light down. You can see the slot. Uh, right there and then you can see the bottom corners where they're 45 off right there and right there and of course it's slotted right there too but that's it it just looks like a uh, metal bookshelf all right now the next step now is is doing the lid Figuring out exactly where I want the the fill and the pump to screw into that. And once I do that, then I'll cut, I'll take my circle cutter and I'll cut two holes in it for that. And I will actually make a flange is what I'll do to go into the into the top of the lid there. So I'll do that, and then I'll put the vent. I'll put the vent in it too. Center the vent up in the center of it. And then once I get that done on the lid, then and get it welded on and all, then the lid will be going on the tank. Then and all that will be then is just welding the lid out on it. And just weld. Just take off welding. What I'll do, I'll fit the lid up on it, get it tacked real good, and then I'll flip the tank completely upside down on the table where I can weld the heck out of it on that lip where that lip's overlapping and then it'll be just uh, ready to sit there the next day then I'll pressure test it and see see what she looks like running around it with some uh, soap and water and check it and if there's some holes in it if there's some pinholes in it I'll just take the grinder and grind them Grind them out, weld back over it again. That's all this too. Usually, there's all you always gonna have one or two little pinholes in it somewhere on it. So, and like I said, just take the grinder and run the grinder. I just take soapstone, mark where it is, run the grinder, and knock the grinder because it's usually just gonna be little pinholes. All it's gonna be, and weld it back up. And then she's ready to uh, paint. So, we'll see y'all.